Dear friends of Sanmi 2020, hi everybody. I'm Giulio Curiel from New Musical Instruments. Today we are here to meet an engineer coming from the pioneer ears of the synthesizers. He's not from USA like Moog or Buchla. He acted in a totally different part of the world. At Sanmi 2020, today we meet Vladimir Kuzmin. Hi Vladimir. Welcome to Sunmit. For the youngest of us, could you please tell us something about yourself and your history? Hi Julia. Hi all in Sunmit. I was born in 1953 in the USSR, in Vladivostok city. It is a city in the far east of our country. In 1963, our family moved to Sverdlovsk, now Ekaterinburg city. And since, since all my life is associated with this city. In 1976, I graduated the Mining Institute and started working in Sverdlovsk Electro Automatic Plant. From the very youth till now, my two favorite hobbies were music and electronics. And this was a good base for all my life. In 1982, the Formanta Polybox debuted on the Russian market of synthesizers. It was a duophonic analog synthesizer. So, how did the idea of producing a Russian synthesizer came about? What were the previous experiences of this company and of yourself? And what was exactly Formanta? Well, Formanta company in the beginning was our sister plant in the Kachkanar city, 300 kilometers to the north from Sverdlovsk. It was a very young plant with mostly feminine stuff because their husbands were busy in metallurgical plant. The main products were parts for main products of parent plant and also some civic products as musical instruments for Amy, Rakton, Polyvox and also candies and vacuum cleaners. Later they began to design and manufacture their own products under the brand name Farmanta. And since that time, the whole plant has this name. About Polyvox. In 1982, I already worked in Vector for six years and took part in designing electronic music, musical organs for MEM and Mano. They were musical instruments of old style and I feel the need of musicians to have modern sound and modern instruments. At that time, there were analog synthesizers and polyphonic piano strings, and the best of them were mini Moog and Italian organs. But when we decided to design and manufacture something similar, we have found that in the USA we had nothing, no information, no literature, no schematics and no people and experience at all. But I had music records with the sound, photos in magazines and LPs, and even some samples of Roland, Cork and Yamaha synthesizers used in some professional bands. So main work was simply to know out what this or that knob really do, and then think how it can be done with Soviet components, with original schematics. And maybe this is the reason why it sounds so different. What were the difficulties in the rush of those years for a designer like you to embark in a project like the Formanta Polybox? Had you other non-musical, other technical projects in other fields? First of all, bad quality of components and absence of the equivalence of foreign modern components. The second is absence of foreign technical literature. Our plant had modern technology as it was military, but other Soviet civil plants were in more bad conditions. From the very youth I was a radio fan. I had self-made radio transceiver a special permission to communicate with other countries in the shortwave bands. 
In the rush of those years, was it difficult to find Japanese or American synthesizers? And about Italian instruments, did you meet one of them, like Krumar, Elka, Farfisa? Although our state market was closed to the foreign musical instruments, some Soviet bands had them, and I had opportunity to see them, to twinkle knobs. It was uh, very, very helpful. Concerning Italian instruments, of course we knew about them, and we considered them to be the best in that class. Moreover, I took Krumer Maltiman S as a mark for my piano strings quintet. It has similar filter sockets for piano and harp timbres. But for the brass timbres, I choose Polyvox filter, and for strings section, I used my my invention, two-point unison, which is more simple, more effective, and have more natural sound. I think that no one band or orchestra had elk organs. I only saw them on the photos. The production of Polyvox ended in 1990. So, what led to that decision? And what happened afterwards? Did you have other ideas, other projects, even in an unfinished form? I think the reason was simple, the decrease of sales, because at the time the inner market was already open and full of foreign digital instruments. Although I had a new version of, of the Polyvox in 1986, more compact, compact and stable, but it was never in production. And imagine, after 30 years Moscow's Elta company began to manufacture it. Polyvox Mini has the amazing features. I demonstrated it in my, my YouTube channel. But uh, Polyvox was not the last product designed by me and my wife Olympiada. 1984 Piano String Quintet, 1986 Semi Digital Digital Four Voices Synthesizer Maestro, 1990 Fully Digital Synthesizer Arton IK51 and 1991 local synthesizer VS-34. These products were in production in thousand pieces. But there were some extra ideas which did not come true in products. For example, above mentioned, mentioned Polyvox Mini, Vakoda on the base of formal principle, the part of it exists in a vocal synthesizer VS-34. And our last invention before any production was stopped. Fully digital synthesizer with our own method of analysis and synthesis of sound. Our research proved that it was possible to have fully programmable synthesizer with sound quality of sampler, controllable as synthesizer, and which could have only 256 by so memory for synthesis of any sound with four minutes duration. At last I can tell you about the project of 1989. This was an absolutely new class of instruments that gave the musician freedom on scene. It connect as drumstick or bass or other monophonic instrument and even control the whole MIDI system. This futuristic uh, design is also made by my wife Olympiada. I demonstrate the only existing sample of this instrument in my YouTube channel. Let's talk about today. Can you please tell us what you're doing presently? Are you still in the field of electronic musical instruments? Have you got any idea, any project that you are still developing? Now I continue working under my earlier and new ideas. <clears throat> For example, I designed schematics of module called Humanizer on, on the base of uh, Forman Tvokoda principle, which can bring human sense to the sound. Then special model of substructive synthesis. It can absolutely substitute the traditional filter and do the sound many times better and can widen its opportunities. And at last my idea not still realized. Hard soft 
interface of modular synthesizer. Here it is. It is universal and useful way to control from notebook or iPad the whole modular synthesizer system. I speak about and it also in my YouTube channel Vladimir Kuzmin Polyvox. One word. Well, we know that you have a son, Vladimir Jr., who is also in the audio and acoustic business. So, what is doing right now? What are his projects? Yes, I have a son, Vladimir Kuzmin Jr. He is uh, 44. He is also an engineer with high school education, and he is also an inventor by in acoustic and electroacoustic fields. His experience the well, development of sound reinforcement system, insulation and operation have shown that moving forward is still possible. He thinks that many audio equipment designers concentrate overly on system frequency response, while the main loss of quality in program signal transmission occurs due to low time resolu resolution. Uh, and human hearing is able to recognize time definition, the difference in incoming sounds, down to, to 10 microseconds, and latest research has found that it may be as low as 5 mi microseconds. Today he is working on an interesting project that may lead to significant uh, changes in live sound and large-scale sound reinforcement industry. Perfect, Vladimir. Thank you so much for participating in this virtual edition of SoundMeet. We hope to meet you in person the upcoming year in 2021 with uh, new projects uh, and your new ideas. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you, Julia, for this conversation. Thank you to SoundMeet for invitation to take part in this virtual sound, sound meet and in future events. Grazie.